Come on into the ditch. I'm your resident ditch witch, Tara Tyne, and we're about to get witchy, whether you like it or not. Today, we are doing a spot of autumn foraging. I'm looking for mushrooms in forested areas, and there's some berries I want to pick up too. My plan is to make some winter berry tonic at the very least, and if we're very, very lucky, we might get a risotto out of it, but we're not holding our breath. This is year number three or four, I think, trying to make this happen. So let's just go for our wonder and see how we get on. Dave has us off to a good start here with the blackberries. He's uh, picking some for a munch on the way up the mountain now. We'll, uh, mm. We didn't bring the containers for the blackberries here because I thought this was going to be mushroom territory. Mm. They're back in the car for when we make another stop later. Can't beat it. Definitely a great snack for the walk. Go on. Mmm. Mmm. here in Carlingford, uh, up the mountain in the forest because I have come across ballets up here before, otherwise known as penny buns, but it's incredibly hit or miss. It's usually miss, but it's just such a beautiful walk up the mountain we thought it's time to give it a go, you know? walking for about 10-15 minutes we've found wild scabious which I've never actually found before since I learned about it self heal haws there's still gorse in bloom the heather's in bloom there's rose bay willow hair but like the, the paths up here are just completely lined with stuff it's a great challenge if you and your family are regularly going out walking in a place where you see a lot of different species growing. Try and identify what they are. It might take years and years to get them all. In fact, it definitely will, but I find it's fun. It's a lot of fun if you're kind of geeky about it like I am. Actually, it's fairly sunny. I'd say we've got dappled sunlight here in the forest. Dave's just gone a wee bit off road there. Can you see him? Say hi, Dave. Bonjour. Uh, I think he thought he spotted something. He's gone up for a wee look. A note as well on pines is that any of you familiar with projects such as Save Leitrim's forests or similar will be aware that Kielce are a national tree organisation um, has basically allowed most of our indigenous forests that were left, there weren't many left but there were small pockets here and there and they seem to have been phased out for Sitka spruces and different kinds of pine trees which while it's much more profitable um, are highly acidic and tend to destroy any habitat that was there before they were planted so you know you will get your ballet mushrooms 
you will get a lot of different kinds of species of mushrooms that like to grow in pine environments, acidic environments, wild blueberries occasionally and things like that. And in places where, you know, soil is shallow and other trees mightn't otherwise grow, you know, okay, it's nice to have patches of pine and the environments that they do create, but I absolutely think that the stripping of native forests or the planting of Sitka spruce and other species for profit ahead of preserving and replanting our own native species here is a sin and it should be rectified. But that's enough ranting for now. It's something I can't help but think of when I'm out foraging, particularly in the autumn time, particularly around these parts because it is so prominent, but at the same time, I'm still having a beautiful walk. Okay, this patch looks very familiar to me, so time to climb the ditch and don't be ashamed to go down on your bum if you have to. Oh, she's steep. Yeah, right there, kid. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I made a wee path for you there as well, Dave. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> and if you are out in pine forests walking and you happen to come across this, which looks like a shamrock, it's called wood sorrel. Now it is absolutely delicious in a salad or a nice to eat just by itself. It has like a sharp kick to it. It's almost citrusy. Just beware not to eat kilos and kilos of the stuff because it is quite high in oxalic acid, which in large amounts can be very disagreeable, possibly poisonous, I'm not sure. But otherwise, you know, in small amounts, in a salad once in a while, there's no problem. I'd like to also state, for the sake of clarity, that it's not magic mushrooms we're looking for today. You'd be in the wrong place looking for them in a forest. But it's a real treat to come out of this particular ditch and see that view of the Mourne Mountains in Carlingford Lock right facing us. Stunning. And a breath of cool breeze Gotta get some peace of mind And you can see that little tiny puffball mushroom there that Dave spotted. But unfortunately, it's very small and it's already half eaten, so it's not really worth crawling in for. It's better to leave it there and let it spore more for next year. So it was well worth one last foray through the ditch. We've actually found some of what we came looking for here, but as you can see, the samples aren't great. They're already kind of eaten away. These are bullet mushrooms and I don't really want to pick them to show you how to identify them because I want to leave these here and come back next year or even in a few weeks time that there might be a lot more here. So if we find some that we're going to pick and take home to eat, I'll show you then how to identify them. So we were heading back to the car to make our way out for a bit of food and to our next foraging spot. And I just thought, you know what? It's coming into spooky season and I know all you other witchy ladies know what I'm talking about. There has been a change in the air in the last week or two. And I think it is now safe to say it's definitely officially autumn, but it has also brought that spooky feel with it. So I thought while we're here, I've always wanted to check out this very spooky abandoned house, which used to be on my walking route when I lived in this village. And I never had the guts to go and check it out, but I've got a camera with me now and I've got all of you folks as an excuse. So we're gonna go and have a look. And um, I've, I've described this as my local Blair Witch House to people. I don't know if it's really that bad or not. What really gets me is, how did they build it here? It's surrounded by forest, there's fields, there's a very narrow path that's very incredibly rough. You would never get a car up it and it floods every time it rains. So it's obviously a very old place that was built 
before the time you'd need to use a lot of HGVs and stuff to build a house. I don't really know. If anybody knows about this house, please let me know because I'm fascinated. So let's see what's around here now, Dave. Oh, it's actually like um, two story. Very, very marshy here. as though it's not that long ago since it was lived in you know you've got the the cement on the wall obviously for reinforcements and but there's just such great character in the place it's got two two chimneys you can just about make it out through the fuchsia bushes which have just grown up through the front of it it's not half as spooky now that i'm actually here but i'm still not 100 percent sure if this would be my ideal spot It'd be quite lonely up here that's a long way before the next house. And it is actually considerably more spooky now that we've gotten up a bit closer to it. You can see, or maybe you can't, there's an old stairwell just here which is rotted completely to bits it's very very decrepit it's a uh, it's probably also quite dangerous it's such a pity to see it in that state but i mean it would be impossible to live in what do you think dave are you going in for a look around now <laughs> i'm grand so yeah, yeah i think i am too let's go for some lunch yeah let's go for some food <laughs> So I'll leave you alone for five minutes. <laughs> we said we'd meet back at the car. Dave was going to come and pick me up just at the bottom of the field. I may have procured us a haul of field mushrooms. Unreal. <laughs> I love these. These were uh, something I used to get whenever I did live out here. And it's funny, actually, when my mom was pregnant with me, my nanny was sent out. <laughs> To the field god love her to get the field mushrooms early in the morning and they'd be cooked up with some butter and some milk and i'll tell you what you can't beat them with a stick agaricus campestris commonly known as the field mushroom can be easily confused with other mushrooms including one or two poisonous ones so never pick and ingest it unless you're 100 percent certain you've got the right ones they commonly grow in sheep grazed agricultural fields their gills range from pink to dark brown they smell distinctly mushroomy and do not stain bright yellow when cut like their look-alikes yellow stainers do caps are pale in color and domed when small opening flat as they grow bigger up to four and a half inches in diameter like this big boy i found as with any foraged mushrooms make sure to keep a sample behind so that if you do make a mistake and need to go to a and e the toxins you've ingested can be quickly identified so what have you got right there <laughs> it's chaos in the village there's a helicopter overhead i've got a delicious seasonal apple and cinnamon crepe that I just got from a crepe van over there and it tastes like autumn and we're here beside the sea and I've got two gigantic seagulls down there going wah wah <laughs> great crack and curling for today back on a familiar road now so by the time we got something to eat and everything it was a little bit late to make our other plan stop at Ravensdale Forest we'll have to leave that for another day but we got so many field mushrooms we thought you know what mushrooms are kind of done and dusted for today so 
What we decided to get was some of the berries for my winter berry tonic. You can see I've got some elder and they're not quite ripe yet, but they're gonna be okay for putting in my winter berry tonic. You really want them this lovely dark, kind of almost black color. And you can see we've also got a nice little handful of blackberries. Now it's only a small amount of them because I made my winter tonic last year and it fit in one of those kind of 500 gram Kilner jars. I want to make probably about the same amount as I made last year. The last thing we're kind of looking for, maybe a few more ripe elderberries. I can see them up higher, but finding some we can reach is going to be a bit tricky. And if we can too, if I come across any ripe rose hips, I'm going to grab some of them as well because they are brilliant for the vitamin C. So we came up here to a place you might remember me bringing you before. Up Sedilla, up beside the famine graveyard. We've just come up uh, because the place is coming down with all kinds of fruit. Chalk a block of grub. Chalk a block with grub. You just have to remind yourself to leave some behind for all the birds and the other wildlife, but I mean, it's like nature's bounty up here, isn't it? It's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> this autumnal stroll with us today well it was really more like a trek but it really is one of my favorite things to do at this time of year and I'm privileged to be able to do it so I thought I'd bring you along and show you the kinds of things that my eye is watching out for at this time of year I think it's a very good way to keep in touch with old practices with the traditions of our land, you know, collecting your vitamin C from the hedges in order to ward off the scurvy and the colds and the whole lot during the winter. And then the field mushrooms on top of it. Mm, I actually, I can't wait to get home and have them. So hit subscribe for more fun and witchy adventures. I upload every Thursday and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Slán agus bánacht. Goodbye and good luck to you. So I hope you enjoyed this re well so I hope you enjoyed this fucking <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this autumnal stroll with us today. Well it was really more like a trek but um <coughs> Ha <laughs> ha